Hello YouTube, Patrick with Homebred Aquatics. So today we're going over my part five of breeding for profit. Number two being plants. Now I know these aren't a fish and you don't breed them, but we do grow them. I really think they're undervalued in this hobby and something that can make you a lot of money here. Trust me, they're my number two for a reason. So, stay throughout this video because I'm gonna show you the top five things you need to know to make money on these guys and get the best value out of them. Alrighty. All right, number one, choose the right plan. Now, what I mean by choose the right plan is I have a huge variety of plants in here, um, but you need to know what's demanded in the area. Um, you also need to know what's gonna grow fast or what's just too slow to make money. There's a lot of things that I've learned through growing that just don't really make a lot of money and actually just end up getting ripped out of my systems because I either can't sell them or the pace at which they grow is so underwhelming that for $5 for a bundle, it's just not worth me to wait an entire two months before I can propagate it. It's just not realistic. So understand about choosing the right plant, whether that be for what the fish stores want, what the people want, or what is too slow growth or um, not worth a lot of money for your time. All right, number two, adaptability. Now, what do I mean by adaptability? So what I've learned with doing and growing plants is being able to adapt to the market. There's certain plants in here I have removed, I've added over time. Now, to caveat to choosing the right plants, you're gonna wanna choose the right plants. But sometimes the right plants aren't the right plants in six months. Um, for instance, in the beginning, I was able to sell a lot of Pogo Stem Erectus, but after a while, it just didn't become a good seller for me. Um, and I really pulled out about half of what I was growing uh, and focused less on that. So, and that means, and also, when I get into selling, uh, being able to adapt to what your buyers are buying, right? The good thing about plants is you can pluck, you know, everything but two or three stems out and still have that plant in your system, but not produce so much of it. And, and understanding that adaptability to the market and what's in demand is a huge thing to being successful with selling plants. Obviously, if you're keeping them completely different story, it's for your pleasure. But our goal here is to sell them. So being able to adapt and pull things out of the system and add new things to the system to better profit over time is a huge thing to understand and realize when you get to that point. All right. So, number three, diversity and options. If you grow one or two things, and I've seen this in a lot of people's systems, um, some people just grow java fern. They have huge java fern plants and that's all they grow. Okay, now you could bring that to a store and sell it, but the store wants a little bit of everything. They want you to show up with a ton of different plants. They don't just want to buy java fern for you, from you. Now, if that's all you're growing and you're like, Patrick, I'm not here to make a bunch of money on it. I just want to make some money on what I have. That's absolutely fine. Bring them your java fern. Be a reliable source for your java fern. But if your goal is to create a market in your area, diversify, have options. On my website, I think I have nearly 40 species of plants, different types of plants that I grow. The options are plentiful, from really easy to extremely difficult. I have it all. And being able to have all that is what's gonna drive people to come buy from you and drive stores to buy a diverse amount of things. Again, it kind of flows back into that adaptability and being able to adapt to the market and have different things. If all you have is five different plants 
and the stores eventually are like, hey, I've sold everything I can, um, and or people just really aren't buying Java Fern anymore, and you have these mother colonies, you're like, uh, well, I, I haven't di diversified to the point where I can break apart this mother colony. I either A, have to sell it all and get a new plant, which you could absolutely do, or you could cut back on that plant a little bit, sell the mother colony, keep a little bit left, and have tons and tons of different plants in the system to sell. So diversity and having options is a huge thing when you're trying to sell and make profit off of these plants. All right, number four. Controversial, but I think it's a huge thing if you're, again, trying to profit. CO2. I run CO2 on six of my systems here, a 75, two 55s, this 40, and a 29 and then a 15. That's six, right? <laughs> um, anyway, my point is CO2, CO2, CO2. Because it speeds up growth tremendously. And when we're trying to breed for profit, we want, or trying to grow for profit, we want speedy, speedy growth. I have to, have to clip my plants every three weeks. Have to. I can't not. It starts overgrowing each other, things die. If I don't get it every three weeks, it will die. But my point being, I produce a boatload of plants between all six of those CO2 tanks. And then add in my other 40 fish tanks I have in here that have plants in there, um, which grow at a much slower rate, which is fine. Don't want a ton of plants in those tanks. But if you're trying to grow for profit, having a CO2 system, having, I'm gonna call them Gucci lights to grow those plants is a must to keep up with demand. And I think this is one of the things that I do indeed keep up with demand. Um, I provide many, many plants every month uh, and I'm never giving them away, which is your goal. <laughs> Um, you'd hate to throw away plants or just give them away. So, do CO2 if you're really trying to grow plants for profit. All right, number five, the most important, selling. So when it comes to selling plants, the good thing is, is there is something you can do that you can't do with fish. That is, Facebook doesn't restrict the sell of plants like it does fish not considered livestock. So you can post your plants on Marketplace, you can go on groups and sell your plants. You have a lot more options to broadcast yourself that you have these things available. Specifically, this group, the Planted Tank Quick Auction Group, where I buy a lot of plants myself from to grow out, is another good option that, hey, I every three uh, three weeks when I got to trim back, selling them on an auction group like that. Even if it's for five bucks or whatever you feel is appropriate for your plant online, the buyer just covers shipping. Shipping plants is very, very easy. Um, it's as simple as cutting up, cutting your plant stems or pulling them out or however you're propagating, wrapping it in a moist paper towel, and then buying one of the $10 priority USPS um, boxes to ship them out. $10, eight to $10 on your buyer's side for shipping and then whatever you're selling them plant-wise. Um, and again, advertising it on Facebook is something you just can't do with fish. Now, that's not what I primarily do um, because I have a inside job, I guess I would say. I work with one of my local stores and honestly, I don't make a lot of cash money from plants. I make store credit, lots of store credit. I'm selling my local store anywhere between three to $500 in plants for store credit a month. I think I got like eight or $900 in store credit right now. Um, and I've had a lot more before, but that store credit is what buys me everything in this fish store. Everything I need from food, to more tanks, to lighting, to equipment, to everything I need. And a lot of what got me into saltwater. Um, I can thank that. 
uh, but using that store credit to further what you're doing. I, now that's difficult, but again, that's that choosing the right plans, the adaptability, the diversity, the speedy growth, providing them all those other four things to that store and providing them boatloads of quality, nice plants on a continuous basis. And if you can do that, you can be that guy, that's awesome. Now everybody wants some cash in their pocket and I do get cash from plants all the time, still on the side to that. Now outside of that, eBay is another good option, the Band app, any of the other things I've told you on the previous, um, previous videos of selling fish, you can sell plants on there as well. Again, the great thing about selling, the thing you got to keep in mind is you have so many more options with plants and it's really easy to ship plants, wrapping them up in a paper towel, putting them in a bag, and then shipping them priority mail. Uh, really lowers risk for you. The likelihood the plant is gonna make it is very good. The cost of shipping is low. So I hope you took these five different steps or five different things. And you can combine them all to really make a lot of money or a lot of store credit in my case on plants and have some gorgeous tanks on the side. All right guys, I appreciate it. See you in the next one, bye.